Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I will present the Jake bone graft procedure, which is a biologic option for complicated instabilities with bone defects in the glenohumeral joint. The typical surgical procedures are iliac crest grafts or a coracoid transfer latache which both, of course, may have specific complications related to screws, uh, to the bone resorption, which due to the screws is non-physiologic. And in case of Latache, you may observe scars between the subscap and the coracobrachial muscles, as well as a hypertrophy of the subscapularis. Furthermore, you may have complications in future surgeries. This is well documented by this paper of the Mayo Clinic reporting 33 shoulders gone in with, uh, treated with an arthroplasty for clean humor arthritis in sh shoulders with previous Bristol or Latache procedures. They report a complication rate of 43%, basically for the hemi and total shoulders, whereas the reverse shoulders performed best in this specific group. Important also, nine of these shoulders required a reoperation. So it's a real problem uh, if you have a non anatomic situation in a glenohumeral joint and you want to put in a Glenohumeral prosthesis. This is the reason why I'm using the J-bone graft because it will permit an anatomical glenoid reconstruction in recurrent post-traumatic anterior shoulder dislocations. It's well shown that the clinical results are similar to those of Latache. The fantastic of this type of surgery was shown by Wambacher comparing the days after surgery the operated shoulder with the non-operated shoulder showing a difference of the size of the glenoid in 70%. However, after a year in 84% size of the glenoid was comparable between both sides. So this is uh, again the principle of form follows function leading uh, to an optimum bony um, situation for a stable glenohumeral joint. With respect to the surgical technique we harvest the outer two-thirds of the iliac crest um, to get a graft of about 15 to 12 to 5 millimeters. We then approach to the anterior glenoid neck. We will prepare it to have some bleeding and we will proceed to make an osteotomy in a 30 degree angle respective to the surface of the glenoid, five millimeters beyond the glenoid surface. We have to widen it up slowly in order to then bring in the graft press fit. Um, we will flatten of proud bone in order to prevent arthritis. I will refix the capsular larval complex at three o'clock with an additional anchor. Indications are anterior glenoid bone defects bigger than 20% of the anterior posterior glenoid diameter or anterior glenoid bone defects smaller after redislocations uh, having had otoscopic bunk cut surgery or off-track lesions with hill sucks defects. Contraindications are mainly multidirectional instability and to a certain amount advanced symptomatic osteoarthritis. I had experience with 14 shoulders 
between 2009 and 2020, seven of them with a big glenoid defect and five of them with signs of osteoarthritis at time of surgery. Only one female patient, all of them were very active, sportively acting. Seven of them had a prior arthroscopic repair and seven uh, come without any surgery. This is the case of a 29 year old man working as a security in a discotheque. He had his initial dislocation seven years ago and more than a hundred episodes of dislocation due to his big bony defect. This is two and a half years after bringing in the bone graft. And this is the CT control and the clinical presentation of the patient, which I've seen now 12 years after, and he's still perfectly satisfied. An indoor climber with a traumatic pancreas uh, lesion two years after initial trauma with multiple dislocations. This is the situation two months after surgery with the graft, and this is the situation 13 months after surgery with the graft incorporated partially and the uh, man is again doing what he loves best. Another example, a soccer player with a traumatic pancreas uh, lesion two years uh, and more than five redislocations. He had had a pancreas surgery and after a year a re-trauma, for this reason, I decided to bring in a J-bone graft. This is uh, two months after surgery. You see the graft in situ. And this is 15 months after the surgery and a good functional result. Finally, a case with a big bony lesion of the glenoid three months after surgery, the graft well incorporated and 10 months uh, nearly normal looking glenoid surface. I had two complications, a graft dislocation that I had to bring in uh, next day in the morning after surgery and the graft fracture that healed with conservative measures. And there was no redislocation and no symptomatic osteoarthritis till now. In summary, J-bone graft is an option for bony reconstruction without hardware. It's cheap. It's potentially of anatomic reshaping. It's biologic. Acromiococcal clavicular system is conserved, so it's anatomic. It doesn't have an increased risk of neurovascular structures. It's a safe procedure. It, there is no negative effect on future surgeries. There is a low recurrence rate. It's highly effective. I didn't observe any. And return to sports is about five months after surgery. And as a salvage procedure, we may have Latashi yet in our pocket. For those who think that only arthroscopic treatment is good for the shoulder, there is also an arthroscopic technique. However, it's really difficult and recommendable only for experienced surgeons. Thank you for your attention.